hi there it's rose welcome back to the channel so today we're talking about logarithm okay what is the connection that logarithm has with indices and why do we always talk about logarithm after talking about indices or why do we talk about indices before talking about logarithm i'll answer all your questions today okay so logarithm can also be called log in most cases you get log you see log on your calculator you see log on your question papers and a lot more you barely see the word logarithm we're talking about the same thing it's just a shorter form for logarithm this word that's the word i'm talking about so in its simplest form logarithm is the number of times you have to multiply a number to get a particular number what do i mean how many twos to get eight how many times do we have to multiply two to get eight yeah you have to multiply two so you have to multiply two three times in order to get eight okay that's two times two four and four times two eight so you have to multiply two three times to get eight now what's the connection we have with logarithm okay because if you notice this is in its index form and we're talking about logarithm so you're wondering where's the logarithm question here we'll get there so the logarithm of eight is three right how many times did we have to multiply two we had to multiply three times to get eight so the logarithm of eight to base two is three what do i mean now do you see the connection this is in its indices or index form or right indices and this is in its logarithm form do you see a connection or should i show you now we had to raise two to the power of three to get it do you see why we had to treat index or indices before treating logarithm log to base two of eight is three that is how many times do we have to multiply two to get eight three times right same here this is called your base two is your base that's the same thing as this place two is the base and then three is your exponent or your power that's the same thing here you had to multiply two three times to get eight right and eight is your solution eight is your answer eight is what you already have it's your answer you're just looking for how many times you had to multiply the base to get eight the more solutions we solve the more you will get it so please do not be confused but this is the connection that indices has with logarithm that is why we had to always treat indices before treating logarithm so now i want you to note something yeah in mathematics we usually write in letters because we want you to know that this could be written in any form it could be two three four it could be any variable it could be any number so we would rather represent it with a letter to generalize it do you get we're not trying to confuse you with x y z and the rest we're just trying to let you know that the number could change so there is no particular number that it's representing do you understand so it's like this is its general form meaning it could be two three four and so on okay this is the index form if you remember and this is the logarithm form so i want to show you its connection you see that the base here is the base here right and you see that the exponent here is the exponent here right and you see that this solution is this solution so how do we call this thing i'll let you know now you can say log to base a of y is x do you see and somebody else would tell you log y to base a is x right x. you could say it anyway just know that this is your base this is what you're working with and this is your solution okay now let's do also an example so that you can get me now we could have a bracket or not okay just to let you know that this is different from two so i'll write it like this now imagine you're given a question like this in logarithm like find the log to base 2 of 64 what did we say we said that log is just trying to say how many times can you multiply 2 to get 64 some geniuses <laughs> will already have an answer they already know that oh i have to multiply 2 six times to get 64 right 
But for people who do not actually know that you have to multiply it to six times to get 64, what do we do? Now, this is how you do it. Equate it to an unknown. We do not know our answer yet. Some of us do not know how many times we have to multiply two to get 64. So you just equate it to an unknown. This is an unknown. It's represented with any letter. You can put Y, R, whatever it is. Okay, so we already know from indices, right, that this has to raise this power for us to get 64. Do you see this? Now, if you remember our rules of indices, it says that whenever you want to solve anything that has an exponent, a power or index, you make sure that they all appear in the same basis. So here you have this and two in, because this is your base here. So you want a base that's same as this. And we know we can write two raised to the power of six. For as many of us who do not know, use your LCM to find it. Should I show you? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> let's do two. Two in six, three. Two in four, two, right? Two again. Two in three, one. Remainder one. Two in twelve. Let's do two again. Two in sixteen. Let's do two again. Two in eight. Let's do two again. Two in four. Let's do two again. Two in two. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how you can get this in case you do not know how we get it? So this is six times, right? Now remember, I was saying equate the base in my previous examples, but it's actually cancel the base and equate the power. I don't know how I made such mistakes, but thank you to as many of you that came, that, that actually brought it to my notice. Thank you very much. I do not take it for granted. So you have to cancel same base, then equate power okay now you have same base which can go and then you're left with six what does this mean this means that two raised to the power of six is what will give you 64 so your log the log is six i hope you got it <laughs> Now let's do one more example. I'd rather I'll give you an example and then you tell me your answer in the comment section below. Okay? Here's a question for you. Why not solve this? And let me know your answer in the comment section below. Okay? I hope you understood everything we talked about today. The next class will continue with logarithm. More examples and more things you have to know about logarithm. So until next class. Bye.